Brittany, the rugged west of France, with picturesque old towns, castles and fortresses, and austere medieval cathedrals. Nostalgia and romantic harbour villages still exist here, but it's also a land of many air and fishermen. Rennes is the capital of the region. It is here that our journey through Brittany begins. A small town in which both medieval and classical buildings stand side by side. In 1720, a disastrous fire that raged for seven days destroyed a number of historic houses here. Several crooked, partly renovated framework houses are situated in the alleys of the old town. Their carved windows and aureoles create a medieval atmosphere. However, they were subsequently rebuilt, even more beautiful and more impressive than before. Today, this is a lively town with cosmopolitan flair. Thirty-two kilometers south is Vitre, a picture postcard town with a city wall, narrow lanes and a castle. English troops besieged Vitre for many years until the lords of the castle finally paid a large ransom for their freedom. So the besieging army withdrew. The well-fortified town subsequently enjoyed much prosperity and has remained intact right up until the present day, a fine example of medieval architecture. During the Holy Wars, Vitre was a Protestant stronghold. Fougere, the old town of today developed on a hill above the castle. It has been very well preserved, an architectural gem. The town has the same history as its fortress. With its 13 towers, the fortified Fougere Castle is a unique building. Unlike the town, it is not located on a hill, but in a deep valley. A powerful example of medieval architecture. Le Mont Saint-Michel, with its historic buildings, the 80-meter-high granite mound is like something from a fairy tale. Powerful fortifications surround the small town and abbey at the top of the rock. Due to its unique location and architectural splendor, this picturesque village is often referred to as the wonder of the Occident. According to legend, the Archangel Michael appeared in Bishop Aubert d'Avranche's dreams and ordered the construction of a pilgrim's church in 708 AD. In the middle of the 10th century, Benedictine monks from Saint-Mandrille took over this mountain pilgrimage, and Mont Saint-Michel soon developed into an important pilgrimage destination that also became important for the village situated below the abbey. Saint-Samson Cathedral is the main landmark of Dol de Bretagne, 
the seat of a highly influential archbishop. largest and most beautiful Norman Gothic cathedral in Brittany. The Chateau La Bourbonce is one of many castles that are still maintained by the descendants of the region's nobility. Castle and its estate are now financed by paying visitors. A traditional pack of dogs is on display. The Spectacle de Meut features the art of hunting with a well-trained pack of dogs, as once employed by the French monarchy. This well laid out parkland with its trees and flower beds is the perfect setting for a large range of wildlife. Both indigenous and exotic animals from each continent, plus many protected species. Concal is well known, Brittany's centre of oyster farming. This delicacy is farmed in the sheltered bays of this area. At low tide, the muddy oyster beds appear and work can begin. These oysters once lived wild on the seabed, but today they're farmed exclusively in Brittany and Normandy. The village is an amicable place. A stone monument commemorates the endeavours of the hard-working women of Concal. Further west is the Côte d'Emeraud, 120 kilometers of what is also known as the Emerald Coast, and also a view of the English Channel. The remote rocky bays and blue sea with its white sailing boats confirms the name of this beautiful coastline. Real gems set within a natural landscape. The Emerald Coast is a world of foaming white surf and cliffs, wild and wonderful, a captivating sight. Saint-Malo is the proud and solemn town of the Corsairs. Today's yacht harbour once contained pirate ships. Beyond the huge fortified walls is a castle, a cathedral and numerous houses. The historic centre of the town stretches across the entire island that was only connected with the mainland by way of a dam in the 18th century. Jacques Cartier set sail from Saint-Malo in 1534 and discovered Canada, it was named after an Indian word for village. Robert Surcouf was commanded by the king to live like a pirate and capture enemy ships. From Saint-Malo, a boat travels up the romantic river Rons. The harbour area has some impressive views. It's farewell to this proud and historic town.
Soon a number of locks have to be negotiated, as in 1966 a power station that makes use of the tides was built here. Powerful tides turn 24 turbines and generators in the direction of both high and low tides. In former times, the boats were pulled upstream by both man and horsepower to the medieval river harbour that ends in front of an old stone bridge. Dinan. This small, enchanting French town on the banks of the Rons is one of the most beautiful and well-preserved medieval towns in Brittany. Indeed, whenever hostilities threatened Brittany, the town's population succeeded in protecting their much-loved town. The Basilica Saint-Sauveur is the town's main architectural treasure. This romantic church boasts a variety of building styles. The 14th century Dinan Castle has been the subject of much restoration work. It's located along the periphery of the town and once formed part of its defences. It's like being on a journey through the Middle Ages. Returning once again to the North Atlantic coast is the holiday resort of Perro Guirec with its fine yacht harbour and good bathing beaches. It was originally named Penrose by the Bretons and the region's first hotel was built here at the end of the 19th century. Today, more than 40,000 visitors are attracted here each year by the luxury hotels and fine harbours of this romantically remote region. The local people have managed to retain the nostalgic splendour of the Belle Epoque and to adapt it to contemporary times with casinos and thalassotherapy. The rose-coloured stone of the coastline inspired its name, the Côte de Granit Rose. It is 20 kilometres long. This large variety of images has been caused by cracks in the granite that have been eroded by the sea. And their rose-coloured hue originates from a special kind of feldspar. The house in the chasm is squeezed between two huge rocks. Along the cliffs is an old frontier path, the Sentier des Douaniers. Here, nature performed a miracle of sculpture. Morlaix is around five kilometers from the coast and is situated within a deep gorge. A mighty railway viaduct spans 58 meters above the gorge. Originally, Morlaix was a trading town. It was once the largest harbour on the English Channel. Both traders and the nobility once settled here. It soon began to prosper. From the beginning, ship owners, pirates and traders took advantage of the favourable geographical location of the town. The medieval character of the old town has been well preserved the romantic houses have been renovated with no expense spared. Mm. 
Now we are in the extreme west in Finisterre, the land of the Calvary Mountains and the fenced-in parsonages of Les Enclos. The Calvaire are groups of figures that depict Golgotha, a sacred history carved in stone. Fascinating monuments that date back to the 16th and 17th centuries. The interior of the churches features a combination of both late Gothic and Breton Renaissance design. Everything has been created from stone and has been adorned with scenes inspired by the crucifixion. A unique example of devout faith. Further west and the Atlantic appears yet again. In Brest, there is nothing of the wild, romantic beauty of Finisterre. The historic old town no longer exists. Its role as the most important military harbour and submarine base in France spelled disaster for the town in the Second World War. Its rebuilding programme introduced a number of new attractions, such as the Oceanopolis, a supermodern sea park that features a large number of animals and plants. This oceanic theme park is located in three pavilions that house huge saltwater pools and contain various creatures that live in the temperate zones of both the polar regions and the tropics. The massive tower of the saint Ronan church rises above the village of loc -Ronan and its 800 inhabitants in the French region of Brittany. Built in the 16th century, the Chapelle du Penetti contains the grave of Holy Ronan and one of the most beautiful prone figures in France. Both the village and the church derive their name from this sacred personage. In the 15th century, the sleepy village developed into a prosperous sail-making centre until the arrival of successful competition and lower prices. The village owes its popularity to the old architecture and dark grey granite buildings that lie within the historic heart of Locronon. Here, old Breton stone houses and picturesque villages make it easy to forget normal everyday life. The Cap de la Chèvre is the southernmost extremity of a peninsula of the Parc Naturel Régional d'Amérique. A remote heath landscape leads to a wild and romantic coastline and a wonderful view of the sea. Bays and rocks are spectacular, isolated and thought-provoking, rugged charm that touches the soul. Douarnenez is a lively harbour town situated in the bay of the same name. It's one of the most important fishing harbours in Brittany and the centre of France's fish preserving industry. More than 20,000 tonnes of fish, crustacea and scallops are fished and processed in the town's three harbours each year. Douarnenez also boasts an extraordinary museum, a maritime museum located in the old harbour of Port Roux.
the Phoenicians and Romans knew how to exploit the town's unique location. The French King Louis XIII and Cardinal Richelieu were responsible for the creation of this fortress in what was once a fishing village, Port Louis. Influential and wealthy shipowners settled here. They ran the East India Trading Company that earned high taxes for the French monarchy. The megaliths of Karnak still fascinate today. Stone relics that are thousands of years old and date back to the middle of the Neolithic period. Although they've been analyzed by scientists, they are nonetheless full of mystique. Some further rocks are thought to have been graves. It's thought that they stood guard over the dead. For several centuries, the tranquil and mysterious atmosphere of this place has fascinated all those who've experienced it. Masterpieces of prehistoric architecture. Grand monuments that have survived time itself. The enchanting medieval city of Ore is situated on a bend of the Riviere Doré that flows into the Golfe du Morbihan. The city has earned its place in the history books of Brittany. Here, two families once fought to rule this land, and a battle decided which one. Today, it's a popular tourist destination. The Golfe du Morbihan is situated on the south coast of Brittany and protects this region from the strong currents of the Atlantic Ocean. Golfe du Morbihan consists of two areas, an eastern section that is calm, almost like a lagoon, and a western part with a rocky coastline and strong currents. This huge bay originated 9,000 years ago when the sea level was raised by about 100 meters due to a warming of the earth. The newly elevated sea gradually created hundreds of islands. According to legend, there were once 365 of them, one for each day of the year. At the edge of the Ruiz Peninsula, close to the shoreline, is the Chateau de Cecinio. Van capital of the Département Morbihan on the French Atlantic coast, a place known for its splendid parks. The Vieux Lavoie are situated on the riverbank. They're a remnant of a long forgotten time. And behind its mighty walls is hidden a historical and architectural gem. Half-timbered houses that date back to the 15th and 17th centuries form the medieval center of Van. Several charming facades lie closely packed together. Religion too is also a focal point. The Cathedral Saint-Pierre towers above the historic rooftops of this fine old town. The western part of France has many faces. Brittany, 
a land of myths, of castles, fishing villages, and picturesque old towns. 